Hello and welcome to the hidden variables and today I'm gonna raise a very interesting question. So imagine you have some kind of extraterrestrial coming to visit us here on earth and they might think very differently, they might behave very differently. So Hollywood tends to portray those kind of uh, beings as human-like, as they're being very similar to us. But this is very much not the case, because if scientists and physicists look at exoplanet, for example, they try to look at the portion in which a planet is not too far away from the star for sustaining uh, liquid water and not too close for evap evaporating those water. So basically what they're looking at is the middle region, the Goldilocks area in which liquid water could be uh, possible and there's going to be some sort of atmosphere to sustain life. But obviously life could uh, be performed and exist by other chemical compositions other than uh, simply liquid water. And that's, I think, one of the ideas of uh, Southern Moon, Titan, that have um, another type of uh, chemical uh, basic composition, organic uh, composition that might uh, hold lives. So besides that, if you think about this kind of uh, alien forms coming here to Earth and you're trying to interact with him, what kind of language, what kind of uh, thought process, what kind of intuition and impression about the universe would they might have? Would they have the same mathematics, the same physics as we humans do? And if one would ask them, what's the ratio between the circumference of a circle to twice the radius? If they have the same uh, intuition and the same, and they live in the same physical space, the answer that they will get will be nothing but pi. Uh, moreover, their language might not be the same as ours, and this could be portrayed in stories from your past. Is that stories from your past? So in the story of the story of your life by the story of your life by Ted Chang is a very peculiar story in which there is an arrival of extraterrestrial species here on Earth and the scientists are trying to communicate and learn more about the other species and by doing so they recover not only a spoken language but also a very interesting written script. So if we take, for example, those aliens, they have very different symmetry compared to us human. We have a bilateral symmetry, meaning you have two hands, two eyes, two ears. Most of uh, our body is symmetric according to uh, one axis. But those aliens are rotationally symmetric, which means they're called the heptapods. And what does mean? They have seven limbs, but they're kind of rotationally symmetric. So whenever um, they face, they're basically facing all direction at the same time. So if you rotate them, they would not uh, feel any different or any change. And what that means, if you have two heptapods just standing each other and you are on the other side, they would not have to turn around to talk to the other uh, being. They would, simply, they would simply observe everything around them, some kind of a panorama picture, um, 360 degrees or two pi around them and that's quite interesting and it raises a lot of questions so if we collapse that uh, concept into the simpler case of one dimensional line and you will be a human standing there you basically would be able to face um, forward and backwards at the same time so we'll have kind of like a 
eyes on your back and on your front and you will be able to just move back and forward back and forward without ever having to uh, turn or twist your attention and if you think about it in the two-dimensional case obviously they have uh, multiple limbs i think seven and multiple eyes to capture their surrounding if they have if they are being subjected into some kind of a rotation along those axes i would try to imagine what happened and what would they experience would they experience the same thing as just being standing still uh, because they would never have to uh, turn but if they might have some uh, rotational acceleration it might affect their uh, experience of the world and that's led to the second and more interesting part of the story the language the thought process and the script so obviously the way we interact and the way we communicate uh, us as humans is by cause and effect we build a sentence uh, that's going to be only understood and interpreted by a chronological order of cause and effect and that's generally the way we think uh, in order to have some kind of action we have to have something that caused that and our physics as well is built upon that principle uh, basically newton's law if you know the initial conditions for example the initial pos position and velocity you would be able to uh, reproduce the motion or the behavior of a system that the language is basically um, kind of like a pictures so many scripts could be drawn together to give you an overall uh, perspective and view so it's not a sentence there is no logical order it, the, the language is kind of like imagine a circle that could be rotated and they have scripts so no matter how much you change it it's always have the same meaning you can read it in any order unlike how uh, written and uh, verbal uh, human uh, language which has to be uh, dictated chronologically so that's very interesting and each symbol could have uh, multiple meanings so while you're constructing your sentence you will have to know exactly what you want to say we'll have to know the beginning uh, the middle and the end point in order to accurately describe it you can just start writing or start talking and come up with your thought as you speak so that's a very interesting idea besides that if we try to generalize and think about the physics perspective one can see that while you approaching a problem there are two main methods of solving it you can use as we mentioned uh, newton laws and uh, the concepts of initial conditions and just use the cause and effect and go on with that or you can use something that's called calculus of variation or the principle of list of action in which for example we know that light traveling between two different mediums uh, obeys Snell's law and the Fermat principle so the light will travel uh, the path which minimizes the time of travel if we travel between two different mediums for example air and water once it's going from air to water the the uh, velocity of light inside the medium uh, which is more dense the water is going to be uh, smaller and therefore it's going to uh, move uh, slower over there so in order to, for the light to go from each two points it must take the path which minimizes the time but then you must raise the question but how does the light know uh, which path minimizes the time and how does the light know we, what is the end point if you never reach that so you have to know the end point in order to take the path but and this is a very uh, difficult concept for us uh, humans to interpret it and to acknowledge and in that uh, short story and also the adaptation to the movie arrival uh, the protagonist in the story basically learns the language and while doing so she gain an insight towards uh, future events she gain the ability uh, to have glimpses and visions about her future self and what she has to do then is just to acknowledge that and then to act upon it so she mentioned that the future is going to be given to her she's going to have glimpses and all she has to do is to act upon and to make it come true so it's it's a very interesting concept and there's uh, the aspect obviously of free will uh, which also the hectopods are being uh, introduced 
by they know everything that's going to happen so why should they say anything or why should they communicate if everyone if you have two species who already know the end of the story know how everything going to play along to just say things in order to say them so they can act upon the prophecy in which they are already known so they know the future but they have to uh, fulfill it in a way so obviously all the speech and actions are trivial to them but they still have to do it in order to get to the future so to say so this is just a very interesting point i think of thinking about those two aspects of physics basically minimizing or maximizing some kind of a physical phenomena and how is that relate to the way we think and interact and that's been portrayed beautifully uh, by this uh, book and the movie adaptation and i just wanted to share it with you so if you like that please feel free to share this video or um, give us a like and let me know in the comments if you want to hear more about that or other stuff thank you very much for watching